get started. So today our speaker is Xiang Ming Chen. Uh, he did a, he did his PhD in Bahi with Klingler, and now he's working in Germany in Hamburg, Hamburg. And today he's going to talk about Omin Medi and its applications. Oh. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, so uh, I will begin with some history about ominimality. So, uh, sorry, uh, can anyone hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we can okay. hear you. Okay. Uh, yeah. When we learn analysis, uh, we more or less encounter some interesting but counterintuitive intuitive topological phenomena. So, so for example, uh, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> topological. For example, uh, the the candle set, the space filling curve. And uh, uh, the more interesting, the the wise trust function. I mean, the every every well continuous but uh, differentiable no well functions. The wise trust. No well trust fun Sorry. Functions. And uh, so, well, more basically. If you consider the following example, let gamma sorry, what happened? Be the graph of the sine function of this sine function x to sine one over x. So, so this is a subset of the Euclidean play. So if you consider its closure, the closure is the union of gamma with the vertical uh, interval from uh, 0 minus 1 to 0 1 right so some basic fact about the list set is that the dimension of the boundary i mean the dimension of uh, gamma minus gamma uh, the closure of gamma minus gamma is has the same dimension of gamma and also gamma is connected right but but not pass connected. So, uh, uh, and uh, more, more philosophically, if you have some, if you uh, deal with some very decent objects, I mean, decent, I, I, I didn't spe specify what the meaning of decent object, but some very nice object. And you wanted to construct something from X, but usually you will encounter some very, I mean, very bad behavior object. For example, if X is very decent, then the object automorphic, uh, of X will usually, I mean, not usually, sometimes will very, be, very, very bad behavior. For example, it's infinite dimensional object. So in 1984, Galatendic envisioned a notion called the topology to get rid of this kind of uh, wide topological, she called it wide topological phenomenon, table topology. And uh, later, uh, uh, almost at the same time, some model theorists found that the all minimality provides some a satisfactory framework to realize the tendencies uh Grotendic's idea. So uh, uh, so I write here uh, a minimal structure. And uh so, uh, and later it found many striking applications in, for example, in Daifantin geometry or, and in Hodge's theory. So 
in these two lectures, I will, go, I will give a brief introduction first to the minimal structures, and uh, I will mainly focus on its application. So let's begin with uh, the minimal structure. So we get on the minimal chain. So what is a minimal structure? So we begin with uh, what is a structure definition. A structure extending R, so sorry, is a collection of subsets S. Well, uh, where S n is a is a subset of the power set of of R n. Sorry, satisfying some actions. The first one is that the algebraic subset of R n are in S n. For algebraic subset, I mean, is defined by polynomial equations. And the second one is that S n is a Boolean subalgebra, meaning it's closed on the finite union, finite intersection, and the taking complements. The third one is that it's closed on the product. So if you have two, two, sub, two, two elements in SP or, and SQ, the product of A and B are in SP plus Q. And the, the first one, uh, the most important one is that it's closed on the linear projection. So if you have some linear map from between Rn plus one to Rn, the image of an element of Sn plus one is also uh, is a uh, learn, uh, is a is an element in SM. So this is most important one. So uh, and uh, the the every element in SN is called S definable. So and uh, a map is called a uh, S definable. A map between a uh, S definable subset is called S definable if the graph is S definable. So this is the definition, and uh, I will give some examples or non examples. The example, the first example, if you take S n to be the collection of all algebraic subsets, then this is not a this is not a structure. Uh, you can see from the following example, if you take A to be to be the set defined by this polynomial equation, well Q is a polynomial. Then if you take uh, L to be the linear projection uh, to the first n coordinate from r n plus one to r n, which is the projection to the first n coordinates, then the image of, of A is given by the inequality, right? So, but this inequality is not in S n. So this is not a structure. But if we, uh, if we take S n to be the Boolean subalgebra generated by polynomial inequality, then this is a structure. So uh, the first uh, three actions are trivial. The only need the only need the action four need to be checked, but this is the so-called a task Seidenberg books theory. I mean it's closed on the linear projection. And uh, the third one is on general construction. If you have a family of structures, then the intersection of this family is also a structure. Very easy to verify this. And so if, so if we, we have a collection of functions or subsets of IN, we can consider the structure generated by this collection. So take the intersection of all structures containing F. Later I will show that the definable set, definable subset in this structure can be easily described using first order formula. So here are some examples based on the construction theory. So the first one, you take the collection f to be the real expo real exponential function, then the structure is denoted by r x, and uh, if you take f to be the sine function, the structure is r sine. And also uh, the third one is that if we take f to be the uh, restrict analytic function, which for which I mean f is the restriction of some analytic function, which is defined in a neighborhood of this box. Sorry. 
and G is a real analytic function. And the list structure is, is denoted by Rn. And uh, the fourth example is that if we take the union of the first one and the third one, then the structure is denoted by R and X. So another, uh, so this is the example of structures. And the, uh, here is an example of definable function. So if, we, if this function is given by uh, from minus one, the interval minus one, one to the real numbers and uh, given by x to the square root of one minus x square, then this is RL definable because uh, you can write this as right, x1, uh, let the graph is just this one. And uh, this is R and definable and uh, you should So, uh, so those yes. so uh, so the the examples the f one f two f three they are, they do, do not contain the semi algebraic set. Yes, they all contain the semi algebraic set because you can see from the definition. I mean, the action one is uh, algebraic subsets. Ah, okay, okay. Ah, yeah. Ah, uh, yes, and also we have Boolean subalgebra. I oh, mean, okay. these two. I mean, you can say that the uh, the Semi-algebraic subsets, the structure of semi-algebraic subsets are the smallest structure. Okay, okay, I see. See from the definition. Okay. So let's go on. So I just mentioned what, uh, the list. I mean, the example in three examples in three can be is described using the first order formula. What is the first order formula? The first order formula. I mean, in the language of S, which I I do not tell you what is language, but you can search on wiki. So it's a formula constructed from the following rules. First one, you can use some ring operations or some order operations. So if P is a polynomial, then, then P equal to zero and P greater than zero are first order formula. The second one is if A is a definable set, the formula X in A is also first, first order formula. And the third one, if you have two first order formula, then you can use some logical connectors. Uh, uh, yes, uh, how to say, uh, if we have two first order formulas, then uh, and the formula involves some logical connectors, also a first, also a first order formula. For example, the phi and f, phi, a uh, phi and psi, phi or psi, negative psi. Phi e plus psi are first of the formula. The, fo uh, the first rule is, is uh, you can use some quantifiers in the first uh, in the formula. So for this, I mean, if you have a first for, for all the formula phi, and uh, you take two and uh, an element a divisible elements, then these two formulas now exist of y in A phi x y and uh, for any y in a phi x y are first order formula and uh, the following theorem tells that first order formula are uh, if you have a first order formula then the set defined by this first by this first first order formula is definable so for example Uh, if you have a a subset of Rn in the Euclidean uh, space, then the, uh, then the closure of a is definable. How to prove this? So by definition, the closure of a is can be write as this formula, right? Uh, for any if epsilon greater than zero, the next y such that the Euclid, this is Euclidean distance is less than epsilon. Then we can use linear projection and the Boolean operations to eliminate these quantifiers. So for this, I mean, we can write a, a, uh, the closure of A as this subset, this set. So where B is, so yeah, where B is the intersection is just this one. There's no quantifiers in B. 
I mean, you can check very easily. And LN is to our linear projections. So if I is definable. So question on this. No. So uh, in a similar way, you can prove many topological constructions uh, with respect to this, uh, uh, the, the Euclidean topology are definable. For example, you can prove that the interior of A and uh, the boundary of A are also definable. And uh, you can prove that the image and the pre-image of a definable subset is uh, on the definable map are definable. And also the composition of definable maps are definable. These are facts. I mean, you can easily write down the formula. So in a sense, the formula is better than, I mean, than linear projections and those, right? So now we come to the definition of all minimal structures. So a structure is called, a structure S is called all minimal if the S1 is finite the union of points and open intervals. So it's just RL1. So we can, so, and uh, so everything is constructed from some very simple finite object use, using linear projections and uh, and the Boolean operations. Finite is very, sorry, finiteness is very important here. This gives us some timeless properties. So here is an example and a non example. So, uh, recall that the R L is or minimal is trivial, right? Because by definition, you see just and uh, R X the structure R X is or minimal. This is a theorem of wiki. This implies this exponential function are definable is to uh, this alpha is irrational I and mean, uh, definable, not necessarily irrational. And uh, the third example, Rn is all minimal. This is a theorem of one and the least uh, to prove this uh, using some result of gap here loss. And uh, the, I mean, usually the union of two structures to a minimal structure is not necessarily all minimal. So, I mean, but Rn x is all minimal. This is proved by Miller and uh, one of the risk. But here's the here's nine example. The R, R sign is not all minimal. Why? Because uh, sign the inverse image of zero on the least sign function. So I mean if R sign is all minimal, then sign the inverse image of zero on the sign function is uh, is definable, right? In the minimal structure, but uh, the sign, the, this inverse image is infinite, is pi, pi z, but z is infinite because z is not definable in any or minimal structure. But uh, note that if we restrict this sign function to some finite interval, then this sign function is, uh, is definable in the or minimal structure Rn. Okay. So from now on, the, the structure S will, will be some or minimal structure and the definable will be definable in this or minimal structure. I didn't specify which structure we are used. We are used. So why or minimal is, uh, is important because uh, the object in, in a structure can be very complicated because use, using linear projections and the Boolean subalgebra, you can construct a very, uh, very wide object. But a minimalness, a minimality will give some control on this object. So there are many good prop 
uh, tameness properties of definable set, but I think I don't have time. I mean, to state and uh, to discuss these properties will take me too much of time. But uh, I will make a list of lists and uh, I recommend the book of Wendell the Keys. And the name is Tame Topology and or Minimal Structure. So the most important one I think is the, the first one, the cylindrical de definable cellular decomposition theorem. So, uh, so my introduction to minimality will stop at here and uh, we are going to work with, with this so, uh, structure. Just a question maybe? Yes, yes. So uh, briefly what is cylindrical uh, definable cellular decomposition means um, maybe. Uh, this is briefly is just means uh, you can if you have a map. Uh, I mean, have, I, mean I don't have the definition. I mean, the definition is kind of uh, kind of uh, complicated, but uh, I mean, it just if you have a you can write. You you can write, for example, sorry, you can write R n as some finite union, this one union of divisible subset, disjoint, definable. No, the disjoint union of definable sets. Called uh, these are called uh cells and uh, uh there are some inductive definition of these cells but I, I think you can find in these books but I, I i don't have i cannot give you the detail sorry is it yeah, okay no, 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 no problem yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because i will not use this because yeah so uh, I will stop at here and uh, go on to work with all minimality. So, the first application of all minimality is, is per application uh, to diamantine geometry. With all minimality and in the list field, we are the Pilavi Kaunis theorem. So, what is Pilavi Kaunis theorem? So, we need some notations. So, let H be a, be a standard multiplicative height function on the field of algebraic numbers. So, by definition, this is if x is an algebraic number, so L is a number field, then the, uh, the height is it defined to be the uh, product over all places of the maximum of one and the absolute value of x at v. And if x is a tuple, then the height of this tuple is the maximum of, li of the height of each component. So now let Z be any subset of the Euclidean space and a DN positive integer T is a positive, a non-negative positive real number. So, and uh, define the following set theta D ZT to be the set of algebraic points in Z with bounded height and the bounded degree. What is the mu L in the definition of actual height? Oh, this is not mu, it's ML, it's the places of L. No, oh, it it just the prime numbers of okay, uh, you know of uh, the infinite place. Okay, I think. A prime is mm. O L in you know, infinite places. Mm. Spec of okay, you know of infinite. Places. Okay. Oh, sorry, O L. Thank you. And uh, again, uh, theta D is the algebraic points with bounded high. Uh, bounded degree and bounded height. And uh, ND is the counting function. It counts the, how many points in these sets. And define the following two sets. Z, the algebraic, algebraic part of Z, is just the union of positive dimensional semi-algebraic subset. 
of uh, contained in RN, in RN, which is contained in Z. Okay, and uh, the transcendental part of is the complement of this algebraic part in Z. What is A here? A. Uh, A is any uh, okay. semi-algebraic sub positive dimensional sem semi-algebraic subset in, in, okay. in RN. I see, I see. Okay. Which is contained in Z. I see, I see. This is called algebraic part of Z. Uh, so maybe, uh, yes. what's the dimension of a semi-algebraic set? It's uh, real as a differentiable or analytic subset. Uh, uh, is uh the dimension i mean you can just consider i mean it is that it's just the euclidean dimension i mean it's the dimension of the interior okay thanks mm. okay so what is the peter wick calling theorem theorem is that if we have now we need to see be definable definable in some or minimal structure any i mean any or minimal structure is that we don't? I mean, if you if you can find the is in define in some or minimal scale is okay, and uh, let the be a positive integer and the epsilon a positive real number, then there exists a constant c which depend on z, d, and epsilon, such that this the, the set of points in this set is grows at the most subpolynomially. The transcend, I mean, no, sorry, uh, I mean, the number of algebraic points in this transcendental part, it grows at least, uh, at the most subpolynomial. So in particular, if you can find the sign, a uh, positive number, alpha and uh, C prime, such that the number of points in Z grows at the least subpolynomial for T big enough, then, sorry, uh, the algebraic part of Z is not amped. So you can find some positive semi-algebraic set in Z. So for example, so if you have a real analytic curve C, which is defined in a neighborhood of this, this, uh, this uh, square, And you consider Z to be the C in the sector with this, this, this square. Then by the magician, this Z is Rn definable, right? So the theorem says that if this, if Z contains many rational points, then C is algebraic. It's a real algebraic. Yeah. Uh, so could you remind me uh, what's the definition of the triangle part of Z? Uh, it's just the complement of the algebraic part. The algebraic part is the semi algebraic positive dimensional semi algebraic subset of Z. It's the, okay. Uh, okay. I see, I see, I see. Uh, but see. the union, but Z algebraic is not necessary to be semi algebraic, right? Because it's. Yes, the algebraic is not definable in some, I mean. Uh, semi algebra, uh, it means that it's defined. Uh, so for algebra, it's the, it means that it's defined by polynomials, and the semi-algebra, it means yeah, it's defined by polynomial and, uh, and positive defined part. by some, ah, like this, and you right. and uh, then you use using some Boolean yeah. operations. Okay, I see. Uh, so, well, it's not mm -hmm. definable. Mm -hmm. I mean, in general, it's not definable. The algebra is so it's algebraic the, part. Uh, so it's the union of uh, all the positive. Uh, it's uh, the union of the or the positive or dimensional semi algebra part. Yes, yes, okay, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So this theory tells us how you can using just counting points, rational points to construct some positive dimensional algebraic stuff, right? So we are going to use this theorem to prove the so called uh, okay. many. Sorry. So I have a question about this Pila Wiki theorem. Yes, yes. Um, so you, so, so this growth is uh, slower than any polynomial uh, uh, function yeah, of yeah. T. Do, do you have, do we have a any idea what's the true growth, order of growth for this set, uh, for this cardinality? Uh, you mean, you mean some effective? Uh, 
Okay. Yeah, some, some, some say some log or more complicated functions. Uh, I don't know, sorry. Okay. I don't know about <laughs> this effective version of, I think there's an effective version, but I don't know this. But is this- I mean, you can try to make this effective, I don't. Okay, but uh, my question is, that is, is this easy example you, you gave it is really a, a, a proven after Pilar Wilkie or just already known before, I mean. Which one, sorry? The, uh, the example two point two. So is it known uh, before the the theorem of uh, Pilar Wilkie, or just it's it's known by this Pilar Wilkie? I think it's uh, I think li li I think people know this before, but uh, I mean this, this just gives I just you give you some intuition on how this theorem is powerful. Okay. Why this theorem is powerful? I see. I, see. I mean you can just you, you can realize you can just count the rational points on this this curve to to conclude that this curve is algebraic or not. <laughs> in, in fact, uh, it, this curve is more than algebraic, it's rational. It can't be elliptic or any genus greater than two curves. Mm. Okay, you are right. Okay. It's, it's, in four, it's stronger, yeah. Okay, Dr. Huang, you are right. Yeah, the rational means that the intersection of Q points is right. The, the yes, Q, Q points. Okay. I mean. okay. So we, uh, we are going to apply this powerful Connie's theorem to the so-called many manifold conjecture. So, section three. So, what's this? The theorem is change the card. Let A be a billion variety, which is, which is defined over a number field. So, and Z is an irreducible algebraic sub variety of at least a billion variety, algebraic sub variety. And uh, the conclusion is that if Z contains Zarek stands quotient points, then Z must be a translation, is a translation of abelian sub variety by a torsion points. So Z, if Z intersect with the torsion points, is Zariski, Zariski dense in Z, then Z should be a torsion corset. Here, C, C0 is a torsion point. B is an abelian sub variety. Abelian sub variety of A. Okay, uh, and uh, the torsion points, I mean, just the points with finite order. So uh, it's some positive integer. Okay. So begin. Uh, uh, before to prove this theorem, let's give let's let's give you some remarks. Remark. Uh, the theorem is first proved. Proved by Renault using periodic method. And also and for abelian variety not over not necessary over number field but over complex numbers. But uh, uh, using some specialization arguments. We can reduce the case for abelian variety over the complex number to abelian variety over some number field. So this, I mean, Reno also used this specialization method in his original paper. So question about this theorem. So in other words, if A is a simple abelian variety, 
and uh, Z is a proper algebraic subvariety, then Z can this only find the many torsion points. Yeah, uh, I have a question. So, uh, yes. Do we have similar result for the like um, uh, non-algebraic uh, tori? Yes, yes, we have. This, okay. this also works for this one. Yeah. I mean, also the same method also works for this algebraic torus. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. You can easily adapt, I mean, the method that I will going to introduce to this case. So, uh, uh, about this Heino's uh, periodic method, what kind of periodic method he uses? Uh, uh, I, I, I don't truly understand, but... Uh, oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's begin the proof. The proof is now called the Pilar-Wiki, the pilar strategy. Proof of this theorem. So let's do a little bit preparation work. Uh, so, so first we consider the complex picture. So we have a billion right, we can, or number field, we can, the, sorry, I changed the color. We can see the, the identification of this a billion right, and consider the, so see it, Labellian right can be, I mean, as a as a torus, this is just the so the dimension. So dimension of A is G. The complex space module sun lattice. Till this lattice. Is uh, lambda is sorry, lambda is the lattice of periods. I mean, here involves the whole theory, but uh, I mean, it's easy whole theory. So now you can, so if we choose a basis for this lattice. Now, then we can identify C, uh, then, sorry, here we can also write it as this lattice. Uh, the, I mean, we choose, and here we, uh, sorry, we have, so we have a real, uh, we have a atom, uh, uh, so as the morphism of real vector spaces of CG with this lamp tensor with R, so we identify CG with, so if we choose a basis of lamp tensor, we identify CG with sorry, what, what happened? CG with R2G. I mean, you, because we, we, we want to consider the, so because the, we want to use O-minimality, but O-minimality in our sense is subset of some RN. There's no complex structure comes into the picture of O-minimality. So we have the uniformization map, which we identified with R to G. This is a uniformization map. Uh, first, we need to note that the, because we need to consider the semi-algebraic subset, but uh, I mean, Semi-algebraicity is independent of choice of basis, right? Semi-algebraicity is independent of choice of 
of uh, coordinates, real coordinates. So here we choose some real, co real co coordinates of this complex space. The second one is that note that this pi is not definable because, because this is periodic function. Periodic function is not definable in any, in, in any or minimal structure. But if we choose a fundamental set, uh, not, pi is not definable. But when restricted, To, to the fundamental set, F, um, here, uh, the fundamental set, I, choose less, I use this basis uh, of periods. So this is just the box. When restrict to this fundamental set, this is semi algebraic, right? Semi algebraic. Pi of this map is definable. Is Rn definable? Uh, because it's a restriction of, of a global analytic function. So, I mean, I mean, in this case is very true, but in any other case for, in other case for, for example, the modular space of abelian varieties or homogeneous or, or streamer varieties, this is much difficult. Or, I mean, even in, it's much difficult in, in, in Hodge's theory also. So, but this case is true. So I don't care where is, well, it is definable in Rn or not, but I, I just want to know that it's definable in some or minimal structure. So this is to, to preparations, then we can begin the proof. Step one, so we want to apply Kilovic, right? So we need to calculate the algebraic part. Uh, sorry. Uh, so here we have a sub right, uh, algebraic sub right. We consider the inverse image of this set. So in order, in order to use Pilaviki, we need to calculate the algebraic part of this set. Again, this is mean the semi considering R to G. Uh, I mean, the semi algebraic subset, positive semi algebraic subset of the inverse image of, G, of Z. So, in order to do, to do it, we define the following subset. Do you, have define, to, do you have to restrict it on the fundamental set? Uh, yeah, I already. Oh, oh, no, this case, I mean, I will show that this, this trick. You can see that in the section with this one is the same as uh, C algebraic. It's, it's the same. Okay. Later, I will in the sector with the fundamental set. Okay, okay. Now I just can calculate this one. Uh -huh. uh, I need to introduce some further, I mean, sets. The first one is here we can see semi-algebraic part, we can consider the truly algebraic part, I mean, real algebraic part. This is the definition. Now, by definition, this is the union of positive dimensions. Uh, I change the notation, I use we. We in R to G is algebraic dimension of V it's positive and the V is contained in this inverse image. Okay. So this set is contained, it's contained in the algebra uh, the, uh, of pi inverse C algebra. Yeah. And uh, 
the second one is we introduce the complex algebraic part of this inverse image of Z. So V is now in CG is complex algebraic. Dimension of V also positive and uh, V is contained in this one. The third one is most interesting one. The, I call it the special locus of this inverse image. Sorry. Pani Z special locus. In the inverse image of S, where well, S is, uh, well, what is S? S is the union of the core sets. I mean, core sets for this, I mean, translation of abelian sub right positive dimensional abelian sub right by uh, points. So Z plus B is contained in the inverse image, uh, sorry, is contained in Z and uh, B is a billion sub right. And the pi inverse, uh, uh, sorry, uh, yes, Z, Z is a point, Z is a point. The uh, dimension of B is positive. So I call this set is special. I mean, it, it usually it's called a weakly special sub subset. I mean, this set torsion, this is core set. Just, just call this core sets. I mean, for. and so obviously we have the inclusion. It's contained in the complex algebraic part, but complex algebraic part is contained in the real algebraic part. And the real algebraic part is contained in the semi-algebraic semi -algebraic part. Yes. And the theory is, uh, that's proposition. This, this inclusion are all equal, in fact. Special locus is equal to the semi algebraic part. Uh, uh, could you remind me uh, what is the definition of capital Z? Uh, capital Z is just a uh, irreducible algebraic sub variety of the abelian variety. Okay. This is just one. This. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So we are going to prove this proposition. So we index this inclusion one, two, three. One. First proof one is equal. Uh, this is simple uh, because for any points in this semi algebraic, there exists a one dimensional connected semi algebraic curve curve C such that X is in containing X. Then using quantifier, I mean, it's not, it's just a sketch of it's quantifier elimination. Elimination. You can find that, uh, uh, this uh, quantified relation, we can find that C is just a piece of some real algebraic curve. Algebraic curve. This proof of the first inclusion. The second one, is equal
Uh, the second means that the complex algebraics part of uh, why, why yes. one dimensional connected to some algebra set? I mean, you can always find such that, right? In this case, complex case. Okay. Uh, because in general, definition is positive dimensional, but how can you reduce the dimension to one dimensional? Mm. Uh, because, okay, so I mean, in this case, you, you can find the point. Mm -hmm. I think you can always do this. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, find the semi algebra curve mm. uh, through a point. Okay, okay, okay. The second, the algebraic part equals to the real, the complex algebraic part equals to the real algebraic part is following from the following is equal from the following lemma. So you do so lemma. So let we be any complex analytic subset. Suppose less. Uh, sorry. Uh, yes, suppose less. Ah, so I, I want to mention that why because, uh, this map is transcendental, like it's given by the exponential function. So the inverse image of some algebraic set is not, is not necessary algebraic. Because by inverse image of Z is, is, is a transcendental object. So here, I mean, here we is usually the by inverse image of G, so it's complex analytic. So that uh, a point C in this complex space has a neighborhood U such that X is a smooth point of some curve, some real algebraic curve in the sector with U, where C is a Real algebraic curve. Curve of R to G. Uh, with this in the section, in the section U is contained in V. So I later I will give you a picture. Then the conclusion is that learn there exists. You can shrink the neighborhood U a little bit. It exists a neighborhood U prime of X containing U. And uh, a complex algebraic curve, gamma, such that the intersection of this real algebraic curve with this smaller neighborhood is contained in gamma, and the gamma is contained in V. So the picture is following. So let me draw a picture. So you have V, which is real uh, analytic. Analytic. And now you have a neighborhood of some this is U and X is here. And then you have a, have a real, real algebraic curve through this point. This C, C. So we identify this one. C is real algebraic. Sorry, yeah. Algebraic. And the conclusion is that you can find the smaller neighborhood of this x u prime and the uh, 
complex algebraic curve inside V. You can find some. So we can, so for this, I mean, this is comma. Okay. So that the comma intersect with this, uh, no, say intersect with this one, the real algebraic co curve intersect with this smaller neighborhood is, is contained in this complex algebraic curve. Okay, this is just the theorem. So from this lemma, we can easily see that the complex algebraic part also equals to the real algebraic part. So I'm not going to prove this theorem. It's, it's a little bit about geometry and uh, I think you can do it. So we, and uh, this, what I want, you want to prove is the third one. Three is equal. Is the X Lindemann theorem for abelian variety. Abelian variety. So, which means that uh, special, uh, special locus equals to the complex analytic parts of Z. Now, complex algebraic, sorry. So, more, pre more precisely, I will So we, again, we need to consider this uniform message map, CG, AC. So here we have a algebraic subset, C, and uh, we have the inverse image. This analytic object, pi inverse image of G, C, and we can see we, to be any irreducible uh, algebraic, irreducible algebraic subset of this C of G, such that complex, I mean, T algebraic, I mean complex algebraic, induce algebraic subset uh, such that, yes, uh, and uh, of CG, which is contained in, contained in this inverse image and uh, maximum for this property. I mean, this maximum for that is the maximal object uh, in the set of all irreducible algebraic subsets of CG, which is contained in this inverse image. So the conclusion is that the X minimum is that The pi of z, the pi of v is a coset. How does, is a coset? Uh, let me write it down. It's z plus p, where p is the appearance of right. Z is not necessary torsion in this case. It's just a coset. Okay. You don't have to take the Sarisky closure. No. Oh, okay. I mean, let's another version. If you take, uh, if you take some algebraic subset in the, in this, uh, in, in the in this universal cover, then you need then you want to project it down to A, then you need to take the risk closure. But mm -hmm. here you from some, uh, some, uh, uh, some downstairs and uh, mm -hmm. then you go up, then go down. You do not need to take the risk closure. Okay, okay. 
Yeah, so, so uh, does this imply that uh, the capital V is a, 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 fine, a fine subspace of CG? Yes. Yeah. And that's exactly what this theorem is. Yeah, yeah. So proof of X Lindemann. Uh, so we we are going to apply pillar uh, We can assume we we first assume A is simple. We can we can assume first the second one we can assume. Pi of, pi of V is the risk dense dense in Z. So otherwise, you uh, you replace Z by the risk closure of because the risk closure of the this image is contained the risk closure of this image is contained in V. So if we uh, otherwise we can replace Z by this risk closure. So now we wanted to show Z, uh, to show uh, Z equals to A. Right. Because if Z is equal to A, then we just alpha subspace. I mean, a, a is just, V is just C of C. So now, uh, it, it, it is enough to show the stabilizer, because I mean, in this upstairs, we, we have a action by C of G, we are translation stabilizer of of pi inverse image of z uh no the, uh sorry we is is positive dimensional right because since pi inverse uh, the the Zaris closure Z is stable on the pi the Zaris closure of the image of this group, but since A is simple, this group is just A. So a subset stable on A is just A. Okay, so we now we want to show this is a positive dimensional. So we use pillar wiki to find some algebraic subsets in this stabilizer. So for this, uh, the idea is to uh, deform this V inside of the inverse email image of Z. For this, we can so more precisely we consider the following set. This is X which is such that we translate this V by X such that it still cuts the fundamental set and uh, it still lies in the inverse image of Z. So the picture is following. So you, you, we have a fundamental set This cube. I mean, in this case, it's just a cube. And uh, we have the intersection. I don't know how to do the intersection. This is pi inverse image of V intersect with S. Uh, no, pi inverse image of Z. Intersect with 
in sect F and uh, we have we yes here in the sector with F and uh, we want to consider the set that such that we translated by some X is also cut this fundamental set and uh, also contained in, in the inverse image. So, and uh, we can rewrite rewrite this set as the following, which we can easily see that this set is definable. And uh, rewrite, so sigma v is just the set of points in z such that the dimension of v plus x intersect with pi restrict to this fundamental set, the inverse image on the list map of z equals to the dimension of v. Then this set is definable. Because what because the dimension function is definable function. And uh, and uh, this pi restrict to this fundamental set is definable. This this is definable, right? Because I just proved and uh, no so and z is algebraic, so this inverse image is definable and uh, we we translate by x is algebraic so this is section definable so everything is definable in this this formula so from this formula we can easily see that this set is definable so now we want to apply pilavik It turns out it enough, so we want to count, count point, right? It count a rational point, but it turns out it enough to count rational uh, integral points. In, I mean, the point in the lattice. So it's enough to count, consider this set intersect with the lattice. So this, and uh, this set can be, I mean, even, even more simple, most, even simpler. So this is just set in the lattice such that when we translate this V by this element of the lattice, this set still intersect with the fundamental domain. And uh, the number of this set with bounded height. So now we, we, want, we count the list set using PRV. No, uh, we want to uh, we want to count the list set uh, with bounded height, right? So if this set is greater than some polynomial, then we can apply the Pilar-Wicke find some positive dimensional some algebraic curve or some algebraic subset. So how to count the list? Because this height function, you can see easily from, this is seen as the infinite long with respect to the, this gamma. So, so the picture is that we have a lattice and we have a fundamental domain F here. We have a sun, something algebraic Right, this algebraic in particular is go to infinity. And uh, we want to count this set. But we plus gamma intersect with gamma is also the same as we. I mean, in order to translate we by the lattice point, we can translate the fundamental set by this gamma. We intersect with F plus gamma or minus. So in order we fix V and translate the fundamental set. So count how many set intersect with V.
And since this, I mean, this height function is seen as the norm fun function, so you can just count the points in some, uh, in some Euclidean ball. And uh, you can easily find that this is just some polynomial, T over two. And uh, so we can apply Pilar-Wiki. And pilar -Wiki tells us. Uh, I have a question. So uh, yes. what, what's HT? Can you, can you uh, hear the height function? What's the precise uh, mean, uh, definition of H gamma? Sorry, H gamma. Uh, H gamma is just, uh, I think it's the max, because gamma is in the lattice, it's just the maximum. I mean, mm -hmm. since gamma is in the fundamental, uh, this is just integral point, uh, is the maximum of each component of this one. Component of gamma. Gamma, we can write as x1, xn, and uh, the absolute value of oh, okay, okay, okay. I see, I see. It's just this one. Okay, okay, I see, thank you. Maximum. Then, because we have this, because this step grows at, at the least polynomial, so Pilarvik implies now exists. Real algebraic curve. See inside this set, which contain infinite many integral points. The integral point, I mean points in uh, lattice. So we choose one. Let gamma be such point. Then we consider the following set gamma. Uh, the V translates by gamma. This is considered in this is contained in C plus V, right? And uh, but C plus V is contained in the inverse image of Z. And this is this set is also algebraic. It reduces for algebraic and the maximum, right? So by so by maximality, this gamma plus V should equal to C plus V. This implies C minus gamma is contained in the stabilizer of V. So we are done. Okay, question. Now, let's, I mean, this is kind of geometric argument, but now we need to switch to that. We, in order to prove the many method, we need some, also some. Can I ask, yes. so how did you get the lower bound for this counting function? I didn't quite follow. Uh, the idea is that once you move from one fundamental set to another one, the height just increased by one. Just one. And also because, I mean, you can just count it because this, this is, you, you can need a space and this is height function is just, just, just the norm function. So mm -hmm. this is, because this height function is just a norm function. I mean, in this case, I mean, in your case, it's very easy because, and uh, you just count some lattice point in some, in some ball, right? In the Euclidean ball. Okay. okay, okay. Because this is a norm function distance. So now, so now the conclusion is that the special locus is equal to the algebraic power. Now comes to step, step two. Step two is it, it almost, uh, in step two we are almost finished the proof of the main method. Uh, it's, it's enough to show 
in order to prove many method enough to show z minus this set i mean is contains only finitely many portion points portion point till i recall what is this as it's just the union of the torsion core sets dimension b a billion sub variety C plus B is contained in C. Why? The claim is that S is just finite union of maximum torsion corset. Because, I mean, in our case, Z is considered the extent subset of torsion points. To a maximum, I mean, if we have two core sets and we have an inclusion, this implies these two abelian subarrays are equal. So proof the claim. The claim follows follows from the following lemma. Proof of the claim. The lemma is we consider the set, the subroid, a billion subroid. Lemma. A billion subroid of A such that oh sorry. such that B plus B is maximum for, for Z. I mean, it's contained in Z. This set is finite. I'm not going to give you a proof of this lemma. This lemma, I mean, the proof is very standard. It's based on the, on the, Geometric argument involve, involving degree is big says that uh, the abelian subarray of A with bounded degree is finite. So this set is finite. So for any, so we are going to prove claim for any B in this set. I mean, in this set, we consider the quotient A. Q. Then you can easily say, you can easily see that B plus B is a torsion corset. It's equivalent to say that Q of B, the image of, of B, sorry, is a torsion point. of this quotient abelian subarrayed, abelian right, A prime. And now we define, uh, we define two subsets of A such that A plus B is in Z, consider all these points and the uh, W prime is the image of this W under the quotient map is it contained in the, the quotient of the image of Z under the quotient. So, uh, if, so we want to show that this set contains only finite many torsion points, right? W. So if, W contains infinite many torsion points. Learn this implies 
W prime contains infinite many torsion points. So we now we need to use some induction induction argument by induction on dimension of A because the base case is dimension A equal to zero or one, which is a trivial case. Uh, this in, this implies next this element W uh, uh, element B in W such that Q B is is a torsion point. Is a Q B is is the image of B on the on the Q is considered in some torsion corset of uh, positive dimension torsion corset. Torsion corset, which is can also contained in the Z prime and uh, of A prime. And the dimension of C is is great is positive. Then this implies B this this corset is contained in B plus high inverse of C prime. But uh, we have this strict conclusion. So but this is uh, uh contradict to our choice let B is maximum contradiction. So we prove that. Now we want to show that so a few a few lines we want to show that so this set is finite. So final step. Again, use PR wiki. The number of points of the transcendental part with bounded height is less than some constant times some epsilon, right? For any epsilon. And a T. This is just the pillar week, the transcendental part for any T. Yes. So if if Z minus S, sorry, contains infinite many, infinite many torsion points. Then there exists one torsion. So we can find one torsion of exact order n, which is greater than C1. It's a number. C2, I will specify what is C2 and a, C, and a row. That's valid. Uh, so we can find such because this this set in torsion point is infinite in this set, so we can find such one. Then we need to involve some um, Galois theory in this. So so since A is defined as some uh, number field, okay. So we consider the Galois group. The, the Galois orbits of Kc, the sigma of Kc is still in Z minus S. So this implies the torsion points, the set, the number of torsion points in this transcendental set is greater than the Galois orbits, right? Uh, which, by definition, is just the degree of C. 
Okay. But this is greater than C2 and low. So just the important is that C2 is independent of uh, 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 C2 and the low, sorry, C2 and the low only depends on A. So, and uh, the C2 in this, this uh, inequality is, is just the C2 from here, uh, which I will say, the uh, inequality is given by the theorem of Massey. And this uh, inequality C2 and low is the, the uh, constant appeared in the theorem of Massey and uh, in the theorem of Massey. So I will just state and uh, finish the proof Massey theorem. So if we have abelian right divide over some number field. Uh, here I wanted to say that why this is inequality because uh, tier two. Um, two is true because that the height function is is less than the order, uh, height of Kc is less than order of Kc. Uh, you, uh, this is just by definition. You can write down Kc and uh, uh, in in coordinates and uh, conclude this theorem. Uh, this, in, uh, this inequality, yes. And uh, the theorem of masses is that if we have abelian right over K, then the existence a constant C2, which depends only on A and uh, this number field, and the low, uh, depend only on A and K, such that for any torsion points, can see in any torsion point of, of order, of exact order, the Galau orbits. Great equal than C2 to uh, n to the power of low. So this proves the theorem. So I stop here. Sorry for. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. And um, it's time for questions and remarks. So uh, I have a question. So, um, yeah. Uh, some general question. So here, the uh, uh, what's the the, the I, I saw that the similarity of hyperbolic uh, x Lindemann theorem. Uh, theorem. Yes. Uh, what's the difficulty in the hyperbolic one, abelian one? The first. Uh, hyperbolic is that if we have a Schumacher variety, as we consider the uniformization map again. This is the universal cover. Mm -hmm. The first one is that, so we choose the fundamental domain, is the definability of this map is not, is not easy. Okay. And uh, the second one is that, I mean, yeah, okay, so the monodromic group is a billion. Mm. Monodromy, we need to use the monodromy argument. Which is due to the linear and the undefined. So and uh, and the third one is that. Uh, me, no, I think uh, for x minimum it's just these two. We need there are some difficulty in these two set. Uh, and yeah. if want yes, if we want a prime, a, a, uh, want to prove more, if so, you want to approve. Like, uh, like the many method analog of the uh, and your conjecture. So, for example, for AG, you wanted to apply similar result, which says that 
Mm. If uh, if we have a have a a, a closed irreducible algebraic subright, if it contains if the same points mm. is statistic dense okay. in Z, then Z is a is essentially a stream of subright mm. of A G. So in this case, we do not know. Uh, uh, we do not know the Galois orbit. I mean, we know the Galois orbit in this case, but in general, stream reality, we don't know. This is a theory of 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 Zimmerman Galois orbit. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, I mean, nowadays the difficulty to prove the general Andrew Orr conjecture for Schumer variety, the difficulty is, is less here to prove the low, lower bound for the Galois orbit, like the mass like uh, this mass size theorem. But mm -hmm. I mean, in general, for Schumer variety of abelian type, it is no, but for general abelian variety, no, general Schumer variety, we don't know. So the, the, the monotomy, I, 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 I see you did not uh, state some monotomy argument in the abelian variety. Ah, you, you, the monotomy argument is just the stabilizer. Ah, okay. Okay. It just look considered stabilizer. Mm. Yeah. But I mean, usually you need to consider the algebraic monotomy group. Okay. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Mm. okay. Any other question? So next time I will, I will speak about Hoyt theory and uh, mm. its application to Hoyt theory more geometric application. Thank you. <laughs> 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 there are no more questions. Then that's the end of the talk. <laughs>